Extending the engine is part of our deep dive series on Sitecore Experience Commerce. In this video, we'll focus on how to customize the Commerce engine using our plugin architecture. The new Experience Commerce architecture is based around discrete microservices, offering REST APIs that expose different areas of functionality. This is a standard way to visualize how Sitecore Commerce would be set up. You have an environment that configures how the instance is meant to operate, with one or more instances, usually content management and content delivery. These instances can then map to a service specific to their role. A shop service, for example, maps to content delivery and an authoring service maps to the content management instance. In our example here, we've extended our shop service to include a number of custom plugins. Out of the box, the shop service provides all that is required to run an e-commerce storefront, but adding plugins is the way a developer would extend the functionality of the shop service for their specific customer needs. All of the Sitecore Experience Commerce functionality is delivered using the same plugin architecture that a developer uses to extend the solution. Each area of e-commerce functionality is broken into specific plugins within the Sitecore codebase. For example, inventory and cart are discrete areas of functionality delivered as plugins. Experience Commerce Core, noted here, is simply a series of plugins that help manage the underlying infrastructure and provide an extension mechanism for things like how you plan to store your entities. Theoretically, this architecture would allow us to provide product updates through NuGet feeds that wouldn't break your custom functionality. For this video, we'll use a potential real-world example of sending order status updates by SMS using the Twilio API. I've set up a number using the Twilio console, and we'll use this number to send an SMS to my phone. We'll start by using the Commerce SDK. This is provided as part of the release package and is what you'll use to create your plugins and your customizations. This is also used when initially deploying the Experience Commerce solution. The SDK has a number of projects, AdventureWorks and Habitat. These are used to generate the default data like your catalogs during environment initialization. The CS migration project is for migrating data from Commerce Server. And the upgrade project uh, upgrades data from previous versions of the Commerce Engine to the current version 9. The Braintree project is the source for our integration to Braintree for payment processing. These are all great examples on how to construct your own plugins as well. All of these projects are compiled and referenced by the Commerce Engine project. Adding your new plugin to the solution and adding a reference to the Commerce Engine project is all you need to do to add your functionality to the engine. So you can see we have our plugin sample here, Twilio order status, and we have our Commerce Engine project here. And I've already defined the dependency out of the reference, and you can see that we've got our Twilio order status reference inside the e-commerce engine project. To understand what plugins and pipelines exist out of the box, there are a couple of methods to help here. One is to use Postman. We provide a bunch of samples as part of the SDK to help with navigating what's possible with the APIs. So let's run a get registered pipelines. First, we need to get an authorization token and then go down to the DevOps collection. And there's a get registered pipelines uh, call here. And we'll go ahead and Run that. So this returns a result of all existing pipelines and their pipeline blocks within the current Commerce Engine instance. If we do a quick search, we can find, let's do persist order. So there's our persist order pipeline with our two existing blocks. The other option is to look at the logs folder of a running Commerce Engine instance. In there, you'll find a file starting with node configuration. This file lists all running pipelines and their respective blocks. And 
and there you can see our persist order pipeline with the existing blocks we have in place. We'll want our custom functionality to fall in after the persist order block. Ideally, we may want our plugin to work not only when an order is persisted, but anytime the order status is updated. In this case, we'd want our plugin to fire after the order status is updated. This is done using the set order status pipeline. For this demo, we'll keep it in the persist order block. The Twilio order status policy is where you would define any parameters required for your plugin to work. In this case, we need the Twilio account ID and the auth token. We assign these in the constructor, but these values can be easily defined in a policy file on disk. An example of that is the policy used for Braintree credentials. Policy files are found in the web root of the engine under data environments. Our block contains the bulk of our processing. We could tell by the list of running pipelines from before what type of object to expect from the previous block and what type is required for the next block. In our run method seen here, we expect an order object from the previous block and return the same type because that's what the next block requires. We do some null checking get the Twilio policy object that contains our API credentials, and then initialize the Twilio client. We then create a variable for storing our message body, populating the order number and status using the order object passed into the block. All that is left to do is to send the message. You could definitely extend this block to include more functionality, but let's see this bit of code in action. The development experience for the Commerce Engine is pretty straightforward. Assuming you have completely deployed an instance of the Commerce Engine already, go to IIS and stop the website running your instance of the Commerce Engine. The next thing we'll do is check the debug properties of our Commerce Engine. and make sure we're running localhost 5000, as that's how the initial uh, deployment is set up. Next, all you have to do is click play or F5. If everything worked correctly, you should see the API metadata of your custom engine instance in the browser. Additionally, let's check to see if our pipeline block is included as part of the running pipelines. Let's flip back to Postman. Do a quick search for persist order. And now we have our Twilio order status block included after the persist order block. There's a few things we'll need to do in order to test our SMS functionality. We're going to create a cart, add some products to a cart, and we'll do this all from Postman. But let's first go back to our code and set a breakpoint here. This is a great way to be able to debug any issues you might have while you're developing your, your custom plugin functionality. Go back to Postman. Close some tabs. The first thing we're going to do is add a product to our cart. So if you go to cart API samples, there's a few uh, options here. We'll pick the add Mira laptop. Okay, so we've got line added. If you want, you can go back and check uh, to make sure that that got added correctly. Use the get cart method. And it looks like we've got a couple, we've got a line here, and we've got a subtotal of 136.92. So we'll just add one product. Next, we need to add a fulfillment. We'll use the set cart to physical fulfillment.
And then we need to add a payment to our order as well. The difference here is that we need to make sure that the amounts match. So our, let's do a get card again, just to be sure we haven't made any changes. We probably have some shipping costs associated here. Um, so we have a grand total of 150.61. Let's go back to our add federated payment. One fifty sixty one. We've got a good response here. Let's go back to our cart. And now we've got a grand total and a payments total that match. All that's left to do is to create the final order. So we go down to the orders uh, API samples collection and use the create orders method and click send. So we know our custom plugin functionality is working or at least uh, is being recognized uh, by the commerce engine. So we've got our order and let's just step through getting our Twilio policy instantiating the Twilio client object. You've got an order confirmation ID and we've got an order status of pending. And then all that's left to do is to send the message. So once the order has been persisted to the database, uh, a text message should appear on your phone. Just a couple of final things to point out here. Obviously, you wouldn't want to uh, hard code a phone number here. You'd want to get that from the contact of the customer that is placing the order. In this particular case, you can see if you interrogate the uh, the object, I look at our components, we have a contact component and within the contact component, um, since we generated this order through uh, Postman, we only have some basic information here about a customer, email, customer ID, that kind of thing. Um, but you could easily have additional information as a, like a, a phone number, for example, uh, that you could use to uh, populate the message with. Extending the engine is part of our deep dive series on Sitecore Experience Commerce. In this video, we focused on how to customize the Commerce engine using our plugin architecture. Thanks for watching.